Hey everybody and welcome to Q&A Wednesday where I answer the questions that you have about your health and fitness goals. So I have, sorry, I <laughs> kick in my tripod. Um, I have kind of an interesting one today um, because it's not, it's kind of a burgeoning science right now talking about your microbiome um, and about the role that that plays in your health um, and why it's so important. I find it fascinating because really as you start to learn about it, you realize we just don't get taught enough about how our body works. So um, first of all, what kind of brought this on was that I'm reading a really, really great book. Uh, it's called The Mind Gut Connection. Um, I know. I gotta work on the lighting here, it's just being a little weird, but. Um, so really, really great book. The first two chapters alone made it worth it. Um, I'm about halfway through right now, but it really talks a lot about our microbiome or our gut health um, and why that plays a role, why it's so important, and what things that we're dealing with, with disease and issues today, that we can actually trace back at this point to the fact that our microbiomes are not as healthy as we could have them be. So just, just a great topic. Again, this is the nerd in me coming out so if this is not really your thing it's still a good idea to think about and talk about because everything that we talk about health and nutrition actually plays a huge role in this and if you think about things such as um, diseases that we're dealing with uh, with with friends and family and parents such things as dementia uh, depression and and some things along those lines mental illness uh, a lot of that can be traced back into whether or not we have a healthy microbiome so um, and again then we start talking nutrition, which I know you don't want to hear about, but that is my thing. So if you don't want to hear about it, you wouldn't be here anyway. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that. Like I said, really, really good book. I actually got it from the library, uh, the local library, but what I do is I tend to read a book, learn from it, and if it's worth it, and I think I want to go back and learn some more or uh, use it as a, a tool to... Uh, kind of go back and, and reread things so I remember what I, what I read, I buy it. So that's kind of where I'm at right that with that. So it is kind of, like I said, a new and burgeoning science, talking about the microbiome, epigenetics, um, all those things that do play such a huge role in our health that we don't necessarily completely understand. Um, and if you go back and look through the history and how you know we've gotten to where we are, um, it's actually really, really fascinating. And I think we've gotten in Western medicine uh, really away from looking at the person and the body as a whole because everything plays a role and works together. We're one holistic being um, when it comes to, it's not just physical, there's a lot, lot more to it. So, you know, if we talk about, it's not just a gut, it's not just one sort of uh, part of our body that just has a motor and a, a, a Thing that it has to accomplish and then it's done it is a living mechanism and you've probably heard at this point that we have a lot of bacteria living in our gut systems and our intestines um, and it's not just bacteria it's organisms in general there's some other things in there such as yeast and, and fungi and things like that but all together they actually play a really really important role in how our body feels balanced and how the health um, of our system works and how our body communicates so i find it super fascinating um they are now calling our microbiome our second Second brain although I've heard somebody say no nah, it's our first brain and this one is the second um, but it's still really really um, interesting so you know all these all these microbiota all these bacteria and things that live in there um, we coexist um, the, the origins of bacteria came along way before we as humans did um, and so now we are co coexisting together and again they play such a huge role in how our body works and communicates um, with ourselves so there's definitely some beneficial uh, bacteria that lives in our body and then of course sometimes they get a little bit away from uh, from health or you know balance and then we call that dysbiosis um, and then our body you know if, if you have ladies if you've ever had a yeast infection uh, that would be a dysbiosis so you know sometimes the bad bacteria kind of do something they're not supposed to now we, of course we do have antibiotics in this day and age but those can also post a huge problem because yes it kills the bad bacteria or the bacteria that are, are a little out of control but it also kills the good bacteria. And so thereby we, we have issues. I've actually worked with people, uh, clients where I've had to send them to somebody who knew a lot about leaky gut or things like that because they've had multiple, multiple rounds of, of antibiotics and it's done a, a huge disservice to their body and caused some, some serious issues because diversity of bacteria in our microbiome is super, super important. So how do we get that? Well, it starts at birth. You know, if you were a natural birth from your mother through her vaginal canal, you actually received some bacteria right there. And that's important because somebody who was born C-section and somebody who was born natural have totally different microbiota. Um, if you were breastfed versus bottle fed, there's, there's a lot 
lot of things that came in into play to start with with your beginning system now we'll talk about what that means for you when it comes to things like immune systems um, but as you get older other things start to make a difference such as the region that you live in the foods that you eat there's there's again there's a lot of variables that play a role in there uh, so um, Benefits. Okay, let's talk really quickly about benefits of having a not only a diverse microbiome, but a, a balanced system. Um, really a lot of things, again, nobody's taught any of this. So not only is it a newer science, but you know, getting this information out to the average person is kind of difficult, but it's so, so important. So I'm really just going to kind of give you the basics. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail or science or how, why, when, where. Just kind of the overview of why it's so important to make sure that you have a healthy microbiome. All right, and then what to do about keeping it healthy and things that are kind of destructive to it. So your immune system, a good portion of your immune system is built in your microbiome. And so that bacteria knows how to deal with some of the things, the pathogens that come into your system and can help to create a, a hostile environment for them and keep them at bay. Now, even some of the bad bad bacteria um, is beneficial because there are some things that it does. But again, it's all about the balance, the good bacteria versus the not so great bacteria. It's the overgrowth of the bad bacteria that tends to become a problem. Um, but also again, the pathogens can enter your system. And so your microbiome helps to be able to target uh, and destroy some of that, those invaders, thereby Again, that's your immune system. So um, that's not it, but that is a good portion of how, how your immune system is important, where it comes from, but also your serotonin. 90% of your serotonin production, that hormone is produced in your uh, microbiome. So again, such a big deal. Now, when it comes to uh, mental illness and depression and some of those things that we're dealing with, um, you know, one of the things that a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists give their clients is a serotonin reuptake and if I can even say that correctly. Um, but part of the problem is, is we are not producing enough of the serotonin because of our microbiome, whether that's because we don't eat to support our microbiome or whether we're in a toxic environment or a lot of stress, those are all could be totally detrimental to your microbiome. And again, we'll talk about that in a minute, but mood is a huge, here, here's the interesting thing. You know, if you kind of go back and even just some general things, like, you know, if you've ever gotten ready, ready to do something, like speak in front of a crowd or something that really makes you nervous, if you've ever felt that kind of like the butterflies flying in your stomach, that is a gut reaction. Some of your mood, your, um, intrinsic, uh, just your ability to tell if something is appropriate. You know, back in the day when our ancestors had to be aware of danger and be able to make a split decision whether to run away from a tiger or whatever was chasing them, gut, part of that was that gut. You know, they always say, listen to your gut. What, what does your gut tell you? You have a gut reaction, gut instinct. Those are real things. Those are the microbiome responding to information and telling you um, how to feel. So again, you know, somebody who's really dealing a lot with a lot of depression, um, there is something to be said about having a healthy microbiome and how that plays such a huge role in our mood. So um, you think about that a portion of our hormones are developed from the, um, how our how our microbiome digests the food that you send through your your digestive system. So again, trying to keep it basic, but just realize keeping your microbiome healthy is actually super super important, more so than than we ever imagined. Um, and and again, that those that bacteria actually helps to break down a lot of the foods that we eat, and that's why they talk about like fiber is so important because those feed uh, those those bacteria in there that create metabolites that so some of the things that we can't break down ourselves those bacteria in the microbiota in there help break that down in order for us to utilize from the food that we can't break down ourselves so again there's there's just a huge part of our digestion our metabolism uh, that is important through there our brain health um, there's also lots of research that shows that the type of bacteria you have in your microbiome can tell people whether or not you're going to be obese or if you're going to be lean and healthy. So again, part of that's created by what you eat um, and, and the bacteria and the microbiota that you get from your, your mother and from um, your lifestyle, your environment. Uh, really, really interesting. And I, I have done, I've actually heard quite about a bit, a bit about this, but uh, not to gross you out, uh, but there has been a lot of research on fecal transplants um, and how especially in mice, they've been able to take a fecal transplant from a healthy lean mouse and put it into an obese mouse. And it has actually changed the microbiome of the obese mouse and they have gotten lean and healthy. So again, 
so much more than we understand. It's really, um, it's in the, the science and cells is in its infancy, but great information. If you like to read, this is a really, really good book. Um, like I said, the first two chapters alone were just worth the information. Uh, it's a book I gotta own. So, um, again, this is something I've known about, but again, the more that I can read and understand, uh, the better that I can do my job. And the, I, I love it. Like I said, I, I geek out on this stuff. Um, it, that's also now been shown to play a role in things like autism, um, irritable bowel syndrome, lots of digestive diseases. So again, it's, it's not just um, whether or not you feel good it, or can digest food. It is a lot about how your entire body uh, works. So here's something super, super interesting. You know, you have something called a vagus nerve and it's how your microbiome actually speaks to your brain. And a good portion of that conversation comes from your microbiome to your brain and not necessarily vice versa. So those of us that think that our, our brain up here rules everything that is incorrect, what happens down in our gut actually sends a lot of information up to our brain so it can respond. So again, fascinating stuff um, and how our body responds um, to what we do. So other things that they have related to whether or not we have a, a healthy microbiome, um, cognitive diseases, um, yeah, so there's a lot of other diseases, some things that, that play a role in that. So things that really uh, don't work well for our microbiome is things like eating a good portion of food from, from junk food, uh, toxic foods that contain a lot of additives and preservatives um, that was not designed, I mean, those are toxic, technically they're toxic. So again, your body doesn't know what to, how, how to deal with those. And a lot of times uh, that can have a huge detrimental effect to those bacteria. It can also, uh, again, some of the things that we do, drugs, well, not that we all do drugs, but any sort of, even prescription drugs can play a role there. Um, you know, not getting enough sleep, high amounts of stress, the environment, smoking, breathing bad air can actually, you know, destroy some of those, the diversity of that microbiome. And the, the diversity is one of the most important issues uh, is to have a different um, different types of microbiota in there because they each do different things. So the, the more diverse that you have in there, the better off you're going to be. Um, so those are the things that we want to really avoid is obvious and it's gosh you guys it's the same thing as hey I want to feel better I probably should stop eating processed food I should eat whole healthy food lots of fiber lots of nutrient dense mineral dense foods um, probiotics prebiotics what are the things that we're told that really helps us to be healthy that's it like again it kind of all comes down to the same thing exercise it comes down to some of those basics now again I get it. Like I get people all the time. I have to exercise. It could be as much as just get off the couch and walk. It doesn't have to be CrossFit. Um, just moving can be a huge, a huge part of that. So, um, eat a, a variety of healthy whole foods because of course you need all of, of, of the different vitamins and minerals in that. Um, okay. We talked about all that. So just again, biodiversity is really super important. Um, and again, it depends on, you know, it's kind of interesting if you've ever gone to another country um, and the people there eat all these interesting things and maybe they deal with some, some different things within their water or their foods and they don't seem to get sick from it, but we do. Again, it's because they have different uh, microbiomes than we do. So their body has gotten really used to dealing with it or yeah, there's, there's a lot more to that. So your gut is alive. They actually look at it as almost its own organ because you, and you have more bacteria in your gut than you have cells in your body. It's absolutely fascinating and of course the dna that that the microbiota have again fascinating stuff so if they if you actually weighed it out it's about the same weight as your brain so i find that really super interesting but anyhow so again even if that just gives you an inkling as to why it's so important to eat well and pay attention again it's not just about nutrition it is about your stress level it's about your environment um there, there's a lot more it's hard that we only, most of us only look at health as a physical aspect when there's so much more to it, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual. And again, I don't even necessarily mean that in a uh, religious way, but just in a knowing yourself and, and you know, being at one with the world and the universe kind of a way. Those things are important. And again, they, it's, it's the yin, yin and the yang. Everything has to balance out in order for you to be at your most healthy uh, part of life. So hopefully that gives you some beginning information on microbiomes. Again, I don't know everything. I'm, I'm, I know, but I'm still learning. So I find that super fascinating. Anyway, have an incredible day. Uh, we will have uh, 
meals with Melissa this Saturday. Things should hopefully be back to normal. I was in Florida last week. It wasn't even warm. Um, had a great time, but uh, yeah, didn't wanna have to commit to being at a certain place, certain time when it's a three hour difference. But have an incredible week, you guys. And if you have any ideas, if you have a question, please ask. I get my very best ideas from you. Um, you can also see all of these videos that I've ever done actually on Facebook uh, on my YouTube channel under Fillmore Fitness. You can go on there, watch everything, um, and you can comment and let me know what you think. Have a great day, you guys. Good night.